The abortion laws that have already taken effect or are about to in this state are a lot like the rivers that run through it. Well, at least the circumstances surrounding them are. They're fluid and they can change direction based on the boulders placed in front of them. There are three separate laws that are all in different stages of enforcement. And those boulders are trying to, well, change those directions. And that could even change once again come Monday when a federal judge is going to listen to arguments from the Department of Justice as to why they believe one of Idaho's abortion bans should be blocked. That would be the trigger law that criminalizes nearly all abortions in Idaho. So what are the implications? Well, let's get some of that perspective from Joe Paris, starting with some clarification we talked about yesterday when it comes to what is in effect and what isn't yet. Yes, we need to be very clear here because there are two parts of the law, civil law and criminal law. And for the most part, we've been talking criminal law, but we do need to talk about the intricacy here of all of this. So mm -hmm. let's be very clear here. As of today, we have two laws waiting to kick in while one civil law is already on the books. And let's start with that civil enforcement law that went into effect late Friday after the Idaho Supreme Court decision. Now, that law passed early earlier this year as Senate Bill 1309, and it allows specific family members of a preborn child to sue a medical professional for performing an abortion after six weeks, about six weeks of pregnancy, to the tune of at least $20,000. And allow, the law allows lawsuits to be filed up to four years after an abortion was performed. And this is enforced by the courts, so it's not to be confused with the criminal abortion laws. So what about those other two trigger laws? Well, on Friday of this week, the criminal six-week ban on abortion goes into effect on the 19th, and that law was triggered in July after a lower court decision with the countdown clock of 30 days. Now, that law was paused by the Idaho Supreme Court for a time, but the pause, or stay, was removed on Friday. And the third law we need to talk about, Idaho's essential ban on all abortions, with a few exceptions, and that goes into effect next week on Thursday, August 25th. So for a little less than a week, Idaho will have a criminal abortion ban set at six weeks. Then next week, the law will reflect the trigger provisions. Now, no abortions except for cases of rape or incest reported to law enforcement or a medical emergency to save the life of the mother. So, everybody on the same page? Good, because it could all change again soon, on Monday. The state of Idaho will appear in court against the United States of America. The U.S. Department of Justice is suing Idaho over the almost complete ban on abortions law. Now, they argue that the Idaho law contradicts a federal law that basically says medical providers that accept Medicare funds need to provide emergency care for people in serious jeopardy. That includes emergency abortion care. Now, the Idaho law, meanwhile, has a higher bar to allow an abortion. The mother's life needs to be at stake. Now, the Department of Justice argues that the higher bar, it conflicts with federal law. It's called EMTALA. That's the federal law. So Monday, the DOJ versus Idaho battle continues in U.S. District Court. And a major conversation will be about the supremacy clause in the United States Constitution. I spoke with former Idaho Attorney General and Idaho law expert David Leroy earlier today. He explains the supremacy clause and the bar the DOJ needs to meet Monday. In short, the supremacy clause is the rule that federal law will win over state law, but only if the federal government has specific authority in that area. You don't just get, if you're a Fed or the Department of Justice, a pass on that kind of argument. First of all, you have to determine whether the federal government has a legitimate regulatory interest in that area, and they probably do here. But secondly, you have to prove that both of those laws can't exist together. And to argue that something that goes on in an emergency room has to outlaw every other application of Idaho law is going to be a heavy burden for the federal government. So what results can happen Monday? A major one, the law in question can be paused. And to be clear, this is just the trigger law we're talking about. The six-week ban is not part of the discussion here with the Department of Justice. Now, Leroy details the possibility of the law being paused and why it may be tough for the Department of Justice to get this accomplished. U.S. District Court judge, as has been done around the country on various other states' laws, can always issue an injunction if there is some immediate irreparable harm found and a likelihood that the federal government would prevail. A state law can be intercepted uh, and suspended for a temporary period until a final decision is had. Uh, that um, is a theoretical possibility, but it's a possibility that the Idaho Supreme Court has already rejected once, and the federal courts tend to look to Supreme Courts of states for guidance about interpreting state law. 
So that is where we stand right now on Tuesday. And to be clear here, if the Department of Justice gets the result they want, the six-week ban would still be on the books in Idaho. And the Idaho Supreme Court, in the background of all of this, well, they will hear arguments on all three of Idaho's abortion laws coming up in September. So there's a lot to get through here, Brian, and there's a lot of nuance and a lot of intricacy. The bottom line here, though, is that regardless of what happens with the Department of Justice on Monday, Idaho will have a, at least a six-week abortion ban criminally. And, of course, as we talked about, the civil enforcement mechanism that allows family members to sue over an abortion, that's on the books right now. There are questions about how that would exactly play out, and we're in a situation where we're waiting and watching. As soon as we hear about a case, we'll have to follow it. So because of what the Supreme Court said on Friday, there are no stays on any of these laws right now. They will all go into effect as they are scheduled to do, one of them already in effect. And David Leroy saying because of that ruling, it's likely the federal court's going to say, yeah, we're not going to put a stay on this trigger law either. So that will likely go into effect on August 25th. But yet after that, there's still the three lawsuits that the Idaho Supreme Court is still going to have to decide if these are even constitutional, plus the federal one deciding if the trigger law is unconstitutional. Right, and there's a lot to get through here, too, and, and a really good point that you, uh, you made me think of. On Monday, the Department of Justice could kind of have a 50-50 win in the sense that the law wouldn't be paused, but that the U.S. District Court would allow them to continue to make arguments, very similar to what the Idaho Supreme Court did back on Friday. Um, I, I know at home this is probably very difficult to read through, so we're going to really aggregate all this information that we talked about for a story on our website. That'll be there later this evening, ktvb.com. And like we said, weekly things change. So keep you updated. Thank you very much, Joe.